you divide your time between Beersheet University and your teaching at Oxford? Well, thank you, Janet, very much for inviting us uh, to come here to uh, the Crystal Library at Ephesus to be part of this wonderful uh, summer program. Um, I am currently a visiting professor of archaeology at Beersheet University. I have been working there since uh, 2009. And so I was invited by Birze University to teach archaeology, as well as to revive the Institute of Archaeology there. But in the same time, I'm still connected with uh, Oxford University. I have been associate with Oxford University for the last uh, seven years. So what I do, uh, I work during the year at Birze University. I work on my field work uh, in Palestine. I have a field work in Jericho. And in the summer, I go to uh, Oxford and I uh, work in the library and the archives. So, so this is how I divide my time between Beers 8 and Oxford. Fabulous. Can you give us a little background about Beers 8 University? Was it established as a liberal arts college or just a little background of Beers 8? So Beers 8 University started as a, uh, a small college. At the end of the 70s, this college uh, was turned uh, to become the first uh, Palestinian university in the Palestinian occupied territories. Uh, and, so, uh, and since then, it started to develop. It started with a few hundred uh, students, and now it has around 9,000 uh, students with uh, hundreds of uh, staff and faculty. And we had a department of archaeology. It was established by an American uh, professor, the late Professor uh, Albert Glock, who was unfortunately murdered. The circumstances uh, of his murder is not clear until now. But he established a department of archaeology at BSA University. He was uh, the ex-director of the Albright Institute of Archaeology uh, in Jerusalem. After his, uh, he, he died, uh, unfortunately, for lack of funding and, and staff, the university decided to close the Institute of Archaeology. Uh, and since uh, in the last few years, uh, the university had, uh, had ideas of reviving this institute. For this reason, I was invited from Oxford to come and help revive this Institute of Archaeology and uh, restart the academic program. So... Um, for, uh, for us, it's, it's quite important uh, to, to have this relationship with the Kressler uh, Library uh, in Ephesus. And, and we're really uh, very grateful uh, for, for, for you, Janet, to invite us to, uh, to come and uh, use the facilities of the Kressler Library uh, here at, uh, at Ephesus. And it sounds to me like you are devoted to educating the young people of Palestine in their coursework. And can you introduce the students that you brought with you? Yes, I mean, uh, on my right here, uh, we have uh, Lina, who's a, a second year of uh, architecture and archaeology. Uh, and on my left, here is Ala, also, she's just finished her second year. Uh, and she's uh, uh, majoring in history and minoring in archaeology. The advantages of bringing your students to Ephesus in order to teach Roman architecture, what are the advantages of that? And why would you not take them to Jerusalem or Caesarea Maritima to study? That is the irony of uh, the situation, uh, that we have to travel you know, thousands of miles in order to come to bring to come myself and bring my students here to study uh, classical uh, architecture. While our country is very rich uh, in 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 uh, uh, classical uh, archaeological sites, uh, one has to uh, remember a number of sites uh, in uh, in Palestine, like Jerusalem, Caesarea Maritima, um, uh, Scythopolis, which is Beit Shan and many other sites that uh, my students are not allowed to uh, go to these sites. The only way for, 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 for them to leave is uh, through the border uh, over the Jordan to, uh, uh, to Amman. It is ironic that I teach my students um, classical archaeology and architecture while from the campus of BZ we can actually look out and we could see these sites in the horizon. We can see the Mediterranean, we can see Caesarea, we can see Ascalon, 
and we can see all these sites. Jerusalem is only uh, 15 uh, um, minutes uh, drive from Ramallah. My students cannot go and, and, and visit uh, these sites, uh, which are now in the Israeli territory. Uh, of course, they say that we have to apply for permits. But for example, last year, uh, it took me two months mm. to uh, apply for permits for 11 of my students. Permits to go and visit Caesarea, it will be not even possible to go and visit uh, these sites. So it is ironic that we have to come from all the way from Palestine, to come to Turkey and Ephesus, to come to this wonderful place, to the Crystal Library in Ephesus, to be able to study uh, Roman and classical uh, architecture. I'd like to know, as a Birzit student, and being, are you close to the university, or are you, where do you live? Well, I live uh, in Ramallah, which is 10 minutes away drive from Birzit University. Uh -huh. I live with my family in a small apartment in the center of Ramallah. In the center of Ramallah. Yeah. Um, I just want to read to you, girls, just something from a wonderful book that Dr. Hawari has just given me and it's called Peaceful Resistance by Gabi Baramki and uh, the foreword is by um, President Jimmy Carter just to familiarize the audience about Beersit University and President Carter says this through my years of work for the Middle East peace I consistently have endorsed education as a way to foster tolerance and understanding of others. I also pray and work for nonviolent means to end the occupation of the West Bank and Gaza. Birzi University is a testament to the resourcefulness of a people under military occupation and their desire to build a state of their own. Which brings us now to Allah. Where do you live and how long have you been at Birzi? Um, actually, I live in Beit Hayena. It's next to Jerusalem, five minutes, um, mm -hmm. six kilometers away from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And I'm studying at uh, Birzeit University. It takes me one half an hour to be there every day. So, because we have checkpoints, you know. Why do you have the checkpoints? Why are there checkpoints on the way to school? Um, because Israel won't put the checkpoints to check us. Maybe we have bombs or something. I was reading in this book that sometimes the students have their books taken from them. Have you ever had your books taken from you? Have you ever experienced that? So they treat us so bad with the checkpoints. So we have to be on the lines for sometimes four hours or it's, uh, the checkpoint is closed. So you can't even go to your university. And if you have exams, you won't do your exams. So it's awful. It's a bit better now, but two years ago it was way much worse. There was a checkpoint between Ramallah and Bir and Birzeit, which was, yeah, awful as Allah said, because you had to go two kilometers walking to get through the checkpoint. And at the checkpoint you had to, well, the treatment was just not right. They they beat students, they, well, as you said, take their books and tear them apart. Well, let me ask you, on your trip here to, for the summer school, um, how did you manage the trip from Ramallah and from Jerusalem? Uh, were you able to go to Tel Aviv, or how did you get here? For you. To Turkey, yeah. for the for summer me, school. For me, because I live in Jerusalem, I can't go by Ben Gurion, which in Tel Aviv. I have to go through Jordan, Olympic Bridge, then came through Jordan to Istanbul. Well, I'm not allowed to use Tel Aviv airport at all, so I had to come through Jordan, six hours drive through the borders, and then stay in Jordan for one night, and then have my flight. So it took you two days to get here, yeah. when it would take you probably 20 minutes to get to the Tel Aviv airport. airport. Yeah, 
and then fly out from Tel Aviv. Why is this experience worthwhile to come to the summer school? Yeah, absolutely. It's just uh, amazing to be here and we can just go and visit the, the and touch the history and the archaeological sites. So it's just amazing just to be here because in Pakistan you can't even go to visit the places because you always have to, to get permission. So yeah, so it, it was, was easier for us to visit the places here. Exactly. Than our, our country. Well, we want very much, as you know, to have Berzit University use Crystal Library as a branch campus so Dr. Hawari can teach Roman architecture, classical studies, and so on here at Ephesus. And that's, that's one of the goals that we have. Um, are there other people in your class who would benefit from this? And how many of your friends do you think will want to come? Well, there's <laughs> quite a lot. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it works out. But, yes. well, right now there's about 20 students in our class. Oh. So if it would be like yeah. great to have like branch campus here. Yeah, we worked hard to get this scholarship and be here with you. So I think all of the students wish to be here in our places now. Right. So, yeah. Many students got really interested in archaeology after I told them about this trip, so... Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. all changing your majors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to archaeology. Yeah. Oh, yes. golly. Would, are you involved with, with Dr. Hawari at, at, in an excavation? Actually, um, next uh, year... We are next we'll year. Be, me really? and Lena together in Jericho. We'll ah. do some excavations there. In it's Jericho. Gonna, yeah. Mm. It's that's the only place we can go there. That's the only? Yeah, um, without permission, yeah. Huh. So the, the permit uh, to excavate Jericho was given to Birzit University? Or who was the permit given to for excavation? Right. Well, I don't know, but the people who are working at the yeah. Jericho now is Birzit University Birzit. along with the University of London. Yeah, there were so British students last year with them. Yeah, so it's like a joint program. I guess that education is our last weapon. Mm -hmm. Like it's the only thing we have left to do. The only thing we're allowed to do actually. Yeah, exactly. As Palestinians, nothing left to us. Just to be educated, it's, it's so important for us. And even in class, there is this democratic always uh, way of uh, discussions, of uh, having, um, uh, I don't know, uh, questions and answers every time you can ask your professor it's there's nothing like yeah oh so you discuss it with your professors and you yeah, sure. options to do certain things or not or choose yeah. Yeah, sure. subjects and all that Allah what how do you want yeah to we have many conversations with our professors we just go and ask them if we need anything they and they gonna help us and talk with us so it's uh, so nice to have the democracy inside our university yeah, it doesn't matter who you are, after all, you're a Birzeit University, University so, student, so yeah, we're all we're, equal there. You know, we are just proud to be Palestinians and studying at Palestinian University, so it's mm -hmm. just cool. It's a wonderful university. Yeah, it, is. it is. And I know that there are university students from different parts of the world now that come to you. That's a great tribute to, I think, to the people like Gabi Baramki, and ha Hanan Hashwari, yeah. right, and others who've really fought hard to make it a, a wonderful place. Yeah. Now we would love to have, we want to expand your horizon <laughs> so you can come to, to Turkey and come to the library too. We would like to. You would like to. <laughs>
Well, we hope this is going to work. Thank you both for coming very much.